Well, yesterday, true to our promise of having a very interesting guest in the studio, we have Miss Wilma Paley with us, who is Director of Consumer Relations in a large Montreal company. I particularly wanted to speak to Wilma because I have been used for quite a while, I suppose, almost in the guise of market research. This new product is called Coets. Now, if you think that my grammar is wrong there, it's not. <laughs> but Wilma, what I would like to find out from you and have our listeners know, just what are Coets? Now, once more, too, it's capital C-O hyphen E-T-S. <laughs> <laughs> Coets are quilted absorbent cotton squares, and they are an essential in applying and removing cosmetics. Well, now, in the talk of cosmetics, we all know that beauty care is an essential part of grooming and of fashion. So how do these things apply in relation to your product? Well, let me say first that cosmetics are only lotions and creams and glamorous containers until correctly chosen as to color and texture and properly applied to enhance one's natural beauty. And in order to apply some of these preparations correctly and economically, a tool is required, or what we call an accessory. Well, I'm glad to hear you call it an accessory, because one thing is certain in the world of fashion, Wilma, and that is the fact that nobody is perfectly dressed unless they are well accessorized. So therefore, nobody is perfectly well groomed unless they are accessorized. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, you might put it that way. Um, I think we are all aware of the fact that in this day and age, almost every beauty flaw is corrective, one way or another, depending on the flaw. Mm -hmm. The first requisite in beauty care is a clean complexion, really clean. And the manufacturers today have seen to it that the cleansing cream formula is designed to thoroughly liquefy the skin clinging components in your foundation, rouge, eye makeup, and powder. However, your complexion is not clean until the cleansing cream and makeup are completely removed. And to do this, one should use absorbent cotton dampened with water or skin lotion and remove with an upward motion, outwards above the eyes and under the eyes towards the center. Well, what particular reason do you dampen the uh, coets? What does it do? Well, as you know, one must never pull on the skin as one might do with dry tissue. The moisture allows the pad to glide, makes this liquefied mess more soluble, and the cotton fiber, the absorbent cotton fiber, picks it up. I see. Mm -hmm. And what other steps, then, uh, with regard to skin fresheners uh, are, are you concerned about? The skin freshener step is very important, uh, and the reason for it is, of course, to pick up the last traces of cleansing cream and to close the pores. This prepares your complexion for applying cosmetics. The potency of the skin freshener you choose depends on your own type of skin. Mm -hmm. Dampen a coet square with freshener or astringent and apply in upward strokes or pads. When both sides appear soiled, split in half. Ah, uh, now, may I interrupt you there? <laughs> <laughs> These are tiny little squares. Actually, what are they? About two inches square, Wilma? About that. Mm -hmm. So what would be the point in splitting in half? Well, economy is the keynote ah, there. Good. Um, when you split the, separate a coet square in such a way that you have two pads instead of one. Then put the soiled surface together, and this gives you two more fresh surfaces on the outside. It's quite wonderful. Dampen, this can be done very easily and makes one pad serve the purpose of two and saves on lotions as well. Mm -hmm. The size is such that you easily hold it in your hand for a maximum working area, gently holding down one end with the thumb, and this allows for a free wrist movement, which you need in your motions. Mm -hmm. And it's a very good idea to pat along the hairline to make sure you've removed every last trace of previous makeup. Yes. Now, this is something that, uh, before I started to use coets, that I was guilty of, and I'm sure most of our listeners are, we put our makeup on, we get that right up to the hairline. That's right. And then when we cleanse our faces, That's right. we leave this little differential, don't we? Mm-hmm. The skin freshener stage is the right time, and particularly when, when you've uh, freshened your face, split your coat in half, turn it inside out, and then you have all that extra clean area oh. to work with, and uh, uh, a good spot is right into the line of your ears and behind your ears where you do put on powder. 
You know, we are careless, aren't we? This, I'm getting so much uh, in the way of education from you at this point, Wilma. <laughs> well, really, because they're so handy, it makes good grooming very easy and very quick. And mm -hmm. I think most of us are impatient with the amount of time we think it takes That's to achieve true. good grooming. Yes. Now, you were going to say something, too, at least we talked of this before we went on the air, about neck care. This is something we're, we're quite careless about, too. Yes. Now, there's a good excuse in the wintertime for, for not treating your neck as a part of your face because surely we don't want to get heavy makeup on no. our collars and coats mm -hmm. but um, in the cleansing stage particularly and up until this point you must start your complexion care right at the base of the neck yes. and this is also important in stimulating your circulation oh good i'm learning so much <laughs> what about this little trick that you have with the hairbrush well, this is one my friends like very much, and this is one that we devised really because of necessity. Um, as you know, few of us own natural bristle brushes, and uh, we find the nylon hair brushes is so economical, and it has the stamina to really give your scalp good circulation. But because it's a synthetic fiber, uh, it cannot pick up dust particles and hair oil as a natural bristle brush does effectively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you take a coat square and tear it in five or six strips and pull in the strips between the bristle br uh, rows, so to speak, and then brush, nothing is more absorbent and uh, uh, really pick up the oil as well as the dust particles as absorbent cotton fiber. Isn't that an idea? Isn't that wonderful? I was thinking how wonderful it would be too for uh, uh, people traveling and the busy business girl and mm -hmm. so on. Well, uh, that was one point I wanted to bring out. Now, let's go back to clean complexion. After all, this is something that is so much a part of keeping skin in fine condition over the years so that when and if we do grow old, our skin is in very fine shape indeed. You should help it along. Yes. You shouldn't do it the injustice uh, that perhaps... Um, we are guilty of because we're busy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, now, in um, clean complexion, you still have further words to say about foundations and so on for dry and normal skins. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, an application of moisture cream before the foundation is recommended for dry or normal skin. Mm -hmm. Some foundations are light in texture and very creamy. Others may be termed as heavy. Remember, the color glow you want is in your tinted foundation, not the powder, although it should be toned to suit. Well, in applying the base, then, would you like to tell our listeners just how important this is from uh, every phase? Yes, it's, it's important to apply your base carefully. Um, the liquid foundations, which are light in texture, may be dotted on the face and blended with your fingers, always in an upward direction, gently around the eyes. The heavy bases should be applied differently because you will find them difficult to blend, causing a pulling effect on the skin and showing up more wrinkles than you actually have. Oh, yes. Slightly dampen a coat square with water. Pour some foundation on it, then apply. The moisture will temporarily thin the liquid and you just smooth it on without stretching the skin. If a deeper skin tone is desired, um, a second application is in order. I see. And again, of course, uh, reiterating the importance of being very gentle around the eyes. Yes. And um, what about rouge and eyeliners, if you're going to use any? And so many people do mm -hmm. use them both today. This, These two follow immediately after your foundation. Uh, eye makeup applied correctly is most becoming. However, I think most of us would reserve the eyeliner for evening wear. Well, I think we should, really, uh, if, unless you can wear them, you know, wear the eyeliner with, uh, let's say, a minimum of show mm -hmm. look about it. After all, all, uh, pardon, all steps in the, in, in the cosmetic application are, are um, truly designed to bring out your natural beauty, mm -hmm. and you must never forget this. And I think the cosmetic houses strive for this. It's our own fault sometimes if we don't mm -hmm. achieve it ourselves. And certainly we should when we get consumer education such as you're giving us today. Now, of course, we come to the almost final step, and that is applying powder. What are some of your recommendations there? Doris, I think it is most important to press on the powder. 
not to rub it in, and I, and I think perhaps we're all guilty of this little bad habit. Mm -hmm. The foundation will hold enough powder to give you a velvet finish, and rubbing may cause streaks. A soiled powder puff also takes away from the desired result. Oh, I should say. And although the creamy bases we have today offer more skin protection as well, I do find, Wilma, and I'm sure our listeners will agree with this, that powder puffs, and we're not trying to put them out of business, but they do soil so much more quickly, and we don't always think of washing them constantly. No. It, it's another job that we... Uh, just can't find the time no. to take care. Well, I know that you have an answer for this particular problem. What are your recommendations on that? Well, of course, this is one reason coets came into existence. They're ideal as disposable powder puffs, and so economical, too. Because they are compressed, there are no air spaces to literally drink up the powder, as you will find with an ordinary piece of absorbent cotton. And because they are ingeniously designed in layers with the fibers lying in one direction, you just keep removing the surface of the pad as it becomes soiled. Mm, this is Isn't wonderful. that wonderful? It is, and well, I know it is because I've done it. Mm -hmm. And about eye makeup and eyebrows and eyeshadow and mascara, how do you uh, recommend uh, the ladies to carry this through? Well, this, of course, follows your powdering stage. Before shaping your eyebrows, and, of course, we want to keep that natural line, Remove any face powder caught in, in your eyebrows with a small dry brush, first brushing in the opposite direction, then into the natural line. And this makes it easier for you to stroke mm -hmm. on uh, the pencil. Mm -hmm. Mascara should be used only on the upper lashes. Now, if you wish for evening wear, perhaps, to accentuate the lower lashes, use an eyeliner lightly. Rather than mascara. Right. Oh, this is a very, very good tip. Uh, I must confess that when I do use mascara, which isn't too often, it's the inevitable time that uh, my eyes run and I forget. Yes, and, <laughs> yes, you know, they're very embarrassing. So I end up with a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> now, Wilma, there are so many wonderful uses for coets. Very briefly, could you just give us a, a few little tips in addition to applying the makeup for them? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are so many. Um, I think you'll find them particularly useful when traveling for ever so many things, and I even use them to polish my shoes. Do you really? <laughs> it's a very glamorous way to polish shoes. They're, they're very handy for removing nail polish or to apply scalp lotion for home permanence or tinting. And because coets are compressed, they won't collapse or wad when wet as ordinary absorbent. But they're just ideal for baby care, for smoothing on baby oil, and particularly where rash areas occur, mm -hmm. and smoothing on baby powder. And since coets are made of the highest quality absorbent cotton fiber, they may be used for first aid and really all uses requiring absorbent cotton. Oh, well, I know that they're a very, very interesting and very wonderful and very handy product. And also, the box is so pretty, I keep it on my dressing table on the little shelf underneath the top, you know, where the mirror is. And it's gold and white, and it goes beautifully with my room, and I know that they fit into every room so well. Well, really, a great deal of care was given to designing the package. Um, once the oval on the top is removed to open the package, uh, you have a completely commercially unmarked yes. dispenser package, mm -hmm. and they dispense so easily, and so they should look very much at home on your dressing table or in the bathroom. Well, Wilma Paley, thank you so much for being with us. I did want our listeners to find out what coets were all about. They're a wonderful little product, as we said just a moment ago, and I don't think that any woman in the very near future can afford to be without them. Best of luck. <laughs> thank you. And thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much for all your wonderful beauty tips.